Mom, you're telling me that my husband is your high school sweetheart too? If you like cheating revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. This jaw-dropping revenge story goes straight into the brutal part and will become continuously more brutal as it's told. Before we start, when the like button asks you if it looks fat in its new jeans, be honest by saying, no, but the fat does. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. This revenge story might be disturbing to cheaters. This story is told from the female perspective. I have been with my husband since we were 15. I got pregnant at 17 and we moved in with my parents. I gave birth to my now 22-year-old daughter. We got married at 18 shortly after. I'm 40, he's 39 now. My parents have been married for 43 years. We're a big family. I have six siblings, the three oldest are my sisters, the twins are 20 and another 18-year-old brother. My dad's father passed shortly after our wedding and left his ranch-style house to my father. My grandparents built a house next door to my parents when they retired. My parents decided to let us live in this house and told us, this would be my inheritance. My husband and I had no issues with this. We went on to have more kids. We have a 20-year-old son and two daughters, aged 14 and 5. On top of that, I'm pregnant with my last child, a boy, due in April. I thought I had a good marriage, we were intimate more than twice a week, we went on date nights, we bought each other gifts, we didn't fight. My entire world was shattered on New Year's Eve, when I returned early from a girl's trip I had taken with some friends. I walked into my bedroom, to find my mom having sexy time with my husband. My mother screamed at me to get out of their bedroom, which really shook me up even more. Unfortunately, my oldest daughter, was also home in her bedroom across the house, getting ready for a party. She ran out and witnessed it all. She saw her grandmother, covered in a bed sheet, running out of our house next door to her house and slammed the door. My daughter was devastated and went to my sister's house. I asked her not to say anything until I first talked to my husband. That night, I asked him for the truth. He told me that my mom seduced him when we were 18, while we were living in their house. They'd been having unprotected sexy time at least once a month, for longer than we were married. I ran the math and was horrified, because the timeline meant, that my twin brothers and youngest brother, could be my husband's. I immediately called my dad and told him to come to my house, without my mom. I made my husband confess and my dad was devastated. Apparently, he and my mom were high school sweethearts too. Needless to say, we could hear my mother screaming from her house when he confronted her. I then told my older sister. She and I decided to have her throw a party for the whole extended family and we invited my ex's family as well. At the party, I had my oldest daughter take all the kids to our basement and put on a movie, leaving only the adult children and siblings. Then I told them, exactly what they'd been doing. Most of the family is on my side, except my three youngest siblings, one sister and the ex's entire family. They all say I'm the douche for dropping this publicly. Word got out and my mom's best friend, who is on leadership at my mom's church, which is also my childhood church, called me to verify. My mom has since been let go as the children's pastor there, and she claims I've essentially ruined her reputation and life. My dad kicked her out and she's now living with one of my sisters. Lastly, my dad insisted on a DNA test for the three youngest boys, before he'd consider anything to do with their marriage. Hold tight, because the results were horrific. The twins, are my husband's biological children. I've since kicked him out and he's living with his parents. My father and I are discussing for me to move in his much larger house. He wants to sell my grandfather's house and help me by financing a new home, so I can get rid of the memories. My husband is actually appalled and furious at me, because I prove that he is actually becoming a dad for seven kids, instead of the five. Plus, I'm also going to take half of his business away from him. My husband started his own HVAC company a few years back, and for the first five years, I helped him get it set up, ran the office completely, and took time away from my teaching career to help him get this established. In my state, all marital assets, including businesses are split 50-50. Since the house was still in my father's name, my husband will get no money from the sale, neither will my mother, since inherited assets are not subject to be split in divorces. My mother is also likely to not get any alimony, as our state is not a no-fault divorce state. I'm now over a month removed, still extremely bitter and angry at my mother especially at her hypocrisy of calling me a skank and shaming my family, when she's the one who did this. 
I also despise my ex with everything within me now, as he was sexy timing both my mom and me in some instances, coming to our bed minutes later. Imagine being happy to be pregnant, and even more so when you have a shared a pregnancy with your mother. I found it so cute and fun. But in reality, he got my mother pregnant in less than a week after getting me pregnant. So she was carrying my half-siblings. He has broken all trust I had in men and being faithful. I have already procured a good lawyer, from the firm that helped us in financial matters for both me and my dad, and my dad is helping pay for it. My twin brothers, one of my sisters, and my entire ex's family, have gone no contact with me and my minor children. My children have essentially lost all of their grandparents but my dad, two uncles, and an aunt on my side, and my husband's three brothers. All due to this mess. I've also developed ulcers and digestive issues because of this, so I'm visiting the doctor soon and I've been in therapy since the first week of January. I've offered this for my two adult children, in case they need family therapy with all of us together, but they're doing individual therapy right now. My 14-year-old knows that we're getting divorced and why. She's so angry at her dad, that I struggle sending her to his house on the weekends. I feel like she's old enough to make a decision on that, but I don't want to damage her relationship with her dad. I've told all my kids, that it's okay to love their dad, even if he hurt me. But the oldest two are resolute, and have cut him off 100%. I won't tell my youngest two until they're teen. Then I'll let them in on why we got divorced, and everyone else has agreed to not spill anything until they're old enough to understand. As for how I had no idea this affair was going on, my husband confirmed to me that they would have sexy time at my mom's office at church. They would do it in their cars, at a motel, and even at the time when we were building the business. They started doing it routinely in his office, once I went back to teaching. They also did it in our houses when my father would go away on business trips, or I'd be out of town. It was a pure coincidence, that I came home a day early from a trip, because I was uncomfortable from being nearly 7 months pregnant, and just wanted my own bed, for me to find out. Knowing they'd be carrying on this full-blown affair still if I hadn't caught them, is what I'm still upset about. The fact that the grandmother and father of my children cared so little about destroying our families, is what I can't get past. What's hardest for me, is that my own mother would do this to me, and would continue to do this for years and years, not caring when it all blew up in her face and that she would be destroying our entire family. To add insult to injury, my husband confirmed in one of our mediated conversations, that the affair started when I apparently made him angry. He didn't tell me and instead, vented to my mom when they were alone. She comforted him and they had sexy time. He loved it and then pursued her after that. He said he would have divorced me, but knew he'd get cut off from her, and since he was more into her sexy time wise, he chose to stick it out with me. He told me I was a placeholder. Of all the betrayal and low blows, that statement is what keeps me up at night. I tried hard to go the route of a mediated divorce, but my ex told me yesterday through his lawyers, that he doesn't believe that the baby I'm carrying is his. Apparently, he wants a DNA test as soon as he's born, because he doesn't want to support a child that isn't his. He also believes I routinely cheated on him through our marriage, and that I knew about his ongoing affair and used that as my excuse to have my own affairs. None of that is true, but I kind of wish it was because it would make the divorce easier. My lawyer basically told me, to get ready for a long, drawn-out brutal contested divorce. And that my ex is likely going to try every underhanded tactic in the book, to make my life even more miserable. I had a phone conversation with my aunt today, and she told me there is a family history of cheating in our family on their side of the family. My grandma cheated on my grandpa for years, but they reconciled. My aunt herself, had multiple emotional affairs but is still married to my uncle. She tried blaming genetics on my mom's affair. I laughed out loud at the absurdity of that attempt to justify her affair, and my aunt is now mad at me, for not hearing and her goofy explanations for cheating out. I'll add that my mom shared these thoughts. My dad and lawyer both say I should hear her out, so I'm still considering doing it. But it'll be right before we meet in early March to establish custody. I should mention that, while feeling cheeky, I asked my aunt to validate, that if my mother inherited the skank gene, to whom she passed it on to? And how did grandma manage to pass it on to her two daughters? So in all transparency, that would probably be the reason why she's mad in retrospect. I've honestly lost all sympathy for cheaters after this. So a small recap. My ex accused me of also being unfaithful because he was, and wants a DNA test when our son is born. 
my aunt exposed multiple affairs on my mom's side of the family, and tried to claim it's genetic and hereditary. My dad and my lawyers encouraged us to meet with my mom for evidence and for closure. So I'll go into what her answers were when we did meet. We went in department and talked about her choices. I met with my mom, dad, and our lawyers last evening. Essentially, my mom said that she knew it was wrong, but enjoyed the attention. The sexy time was great and she enjoyed the thrill of it. She kept sleeping with my dad, because she enjoyed their financial stability and carefree life and wanted to stay married. She purposely slept with him after each sexual encounter with my ex. Because she wanted to make sure to be able, to pass the child off if she got pregnant. She also admitted to enjoying the knowledge that my ex enjoyed sexy time with her more than me. She then said that she is moving in with my ex at his new place, and that she invited the boys to live with them. The twins have visited once since the affair went public, and told her they don't like my ex, and refused to treat him like he's their father. She had the audacity to say, that eventually, they'll come around once she's married to my ex, and then she'll have her family back. I laughed out loud and told her she was delusional and needed psychiatric help. Then I told her, I would be taking out an order of protection against her, so she'd have no access to my minor children. She called me a jealous and ungrateful cow, for not appreciating that she didn't abort me and let me live. She said I should be happy, that they didn't kick me out when I came home knocked up. She even had the nerve to say I should be thankful, because she kept my husband happy when I couldn't, so he didn't divorce me and leave me a broken and damaged good single mother. She then told my dad that she's the victim. Because she suffered from postpartum depression after my birth, and my dad ignored it. So it made her feel alone, and she felt justified in hating me and to have the affair. After hearing that, you'd think that's the last top of this story, but it isn't. It gets worse. She admitted to having multiple affairs from six months after I was born, until New Year's Eve. She emphasized that she'd still be doing it, if I hadn't ruined everything. So, my 38 and 34 year old sisters may not be my dad's either. My dad is even more heartbroken and angry, but we did have both our lawyers present, and we got it on record. My dad has already reached out to my siblings, but to nobody's surprise, I guess my 38 year old sister already knew it was a possibility, because my mom told her about both affairs when the twins were born. When she heard this, she must have thought that they might not be my dad's too, and chose to keep it from us. My dad is devastated by that, even more than losing his relationship with my mom. I'm not sure if their relationship will ever recover. I genuinely have no clue what is wrong with my 38 year old sister. My other sister, who is 34, doesn't want a paternity test and said our dad will always be her dad. My dad is fine with that. I sent a message to my ex through my lawyer, it notified him of an order of protection that I would be filing tomorrow. So that my kids won't have to go to my ex's house, if my mother is there. Neither one has even attempted to find new housing either, so I guess she's planning to move into my ex-in-law's house? I really don't want my kids around that mess. He has yet to respond, but at this point I really don't care what he wants. Little side note. I exposed them on social media. Talking about what they did openly. My family knows about the social media posts as do the lawyers, but my ex and mom, who I rather call my egg donor, have zero chance of a good outcome in the divorce. So I'm going to be petty and enjoy their anger about being exposed, so I'm leaving it up. They can stew in their filth and know, that not only does our town think they're terrible, so does the world. And I have permission from my younger sister to share what happened. I don't really care what my 38-year-old sister thinks. I gave birth to my son in the beginning of April. He is healthy and I had no health complications. At the end of March, I was able to get temporary full physical and legal custody of my kids. My 14-year-old daughter asked me if I'd be willing to do family therapy with her and her dad. I did not want to do it. I fought it, but eventually I chose to do so, for the sake of my daughter and her need to process everything and hopefully move on. I learned a lot more about the relationship between my ex and my egg donor, due to homework the therapist gave us. My ex did reveal more things which I believe to be true. My mom had actually tried to seduce him well before we were of age. From my ex's recollection, when my egg donor took over the youth group, I was 15, and he was a few months from turning 15. The grooming began then. She'd counsel him privately, because he needed it. They kissed at some point when he was still 14 and that was all they did, meaning they'd make out during these sessions, until he turned 18. It was right around the time of the first kiss, that my mom convinced him to ask me out and date me, so they could keep seeing each other, 
without suspicion. At this revelation, I was both devastated. My entire relationship was built on a lie and my husband never loved me, and also a sense of relief, knowing that I had absolutely nothing to do with their affair. The reason I believe this is true, is that when he asked me out, I had to get permission from my parents to date. At the time, the rule was that no one could date before age 16. My mom went to bat for me, or so I thought. We started dating right after he turned 15. The timeline adds up. My dad is currently looking into potential other cases of abuse and manipulation right now, with the help of the church officials. Nothing has turned up, and truthfully, while I hate my mom, I find it hard to believe she'd have the stamina to carry on multiple affairs with other younger boys. I think she seduced him, knowing I liked him and wanted to feel superiority over me. Looking back, all of this makes sense, her treatment of me, and my children in relationship to her other grandkids. I think all of this, was a seriously fucked up case of her being narcissistic, and punishing me for ruining her life. They did not have full sexy time until he turned 18, and I guess that was his birthday present from her. My 22-year-old daughter and 20-year-old son are still not speaking to him, which he has come to grips with and understands, they'll likely never re-establish contact with him. The twins and I have reconciled fully. Now for my evil mom, the egg donor. After the last phone call with my aunt, I cut off contact with her and my grandmother. I was tired of my aunt trying to guilt trip me into talking to my egg donor. My grandma is a whole other problem and is beginning to show signs of dementia and senility. She is still harassing my egg donor and calling her a skank of Babylon, which I'm okay with. But the other stuff she's doing and saying, is not something I want to add to my life of stress. Two of my good sisters were the ones who helped me with labor and delivery plan. My ex knew what the plans were, but also that I did not want him at the hospital until I had already given birth, and was in a better place for him to meet his son. He agreed to this. The day I went into labor one of my good sisters took my youngest two children to her home, while the other stayed with me. Apparently, my 14-year-old daughter needed something from the school and reached out to my ex to pick it up, as he was still on the official pickup list, he no longer is, and drop it off at my sister's house. My egg donor was with him when he took the call. He refused to let her come along, as I did not want my children around my egg donor. She apparently followed him in her car to the store and then all the way to my sister's house. There she threw a temper tantrum on the front lawn of my sister's house. My ex broke up with her, and told her she was too much drama and it just wasn't worth it anymore. She flew into a rage, and physically attacked him and started destroying things in my sister's yard. The cops were called, and my egg donor was arrested for domestic violence. At that point my ex, my sister and I, all took out orders of protection against her due to the instability and the situation. My ex moved into an apartment close to the HVAC company. My 14-year-old daughter has decided not to forgive him, and told him that she didn't want to be around him currently. So only the 5-year-old visits my ex. We've established contact through a custody app and will be revisiting the custody issue in June. I will be pursuing full legal and physical custody, until my ex can prove to me that he's done the necessary therapy and treatment he needs. I still hate my ex with everything in my being for what he did to me from the time I was 15 until recently, but I hate my egg donor far more for what she did to us all. I do have some sympathy for him and I truly want him to be okay, for the sake of my younger kids. Yes, he has met his newborn son. He met him the night I gave birth. I also allowed his in-laws and brothers to meet him as well. His in-laws and I are currently setting up plans for the 14 and 5 year old, to have time with them as well as times they can come visit my newborn. My ex is allowed supervised visitation at this point, not a court ordered visitation, but my wishes which he is adhering to, as he does his therapy and rehab, and he gets regular time with a 5 year old. He does get access to our newborn at least once a week, if he comes with his parents, if he wishes. He's seen his son at least six times since I gave birth and three in my presence. We're slowly rebuilding civilized communication. As for the other divorce proceedings, he's agreed to a mediated uncontested divorce and I'll be getting half of everything, including the business. I'm choosing to sell my shares to one of my ex's workers who'd like to become a partner. The ex is happy with this, and I'll be happy to be completely rid of any ties to my ex. My dad was able to sell my old house. It didn't even get listed, as our realtor knew a family looking and I have begun looking for houses about 45 minutes away from my dad. As for the egg donor, she has gone into hiding. Once the twins told her unequivocally, they'd never live with her and that they wanted nothing to do with her, especially after how she got arrested, she began a whole lot of guilt tripping and blaming them. She is now contesting the divorce from my dad, 
and only speaking to him through her lawyer. As for my 38-year-old sister, she got a wake-up call from this whole thing when my mother called her and berated her for 45 minutes, for not bailing her out of jail. Apparently, this sister has been going through fertility issues, like I said, I don't talk to her and had no idea, and she's been stressed out and anxious and feeling bad about herself. Which is why she let our egg donor manipulate her, because she felt good about herself when she was getting all the positive attention. When she wasn't willing to pay the money to bail her out, as she and her partner were saving up for another cycle of IVF, she realized that she was being manipulated and reached out to me. We have begun slowly talking again, but she is on my side regarding this all. She is also talking to my dad again, which for his sake, I'm happy that he is able to reconnect with her. Back to the DNA test, we did it a few weeks ago and of course, he is definitely my ex's. Having my son has been a pleasure and joy, and he and my other kids, my support system of my dad and siblings has gotten me through this, and will continue to do so. I am hopeful that at some point I will be able to deal with my ex, without anger and bitterness, seeing as he has trauma from what my egg donor did to him. I'll be okay. Like I said, this will be my last update on this. So thank you for all the kindness, love, and support. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment, to thank you, I really appreciate you, because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button, without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.